mind. No, <laughs> no cat as the opening scene. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so in yesterday's video when I got in the car, I saw my cat just hanging out by the fucking trash cans. <laughs> I didn't even mean to put that in the video. I just accidentally let that like slip through. That's kind of funny though. Little, uh, little Oliver. He's been on the bulk. We got him around what? What would that have been? Uh, February? No, no, what am I talking about? More like May. He was born around May? I, just, I don't remember. He's like six inch, about six ish months old now, and he went from what? I guess zero pounds to now, I think about eight. So a little more than a pound per month of growth. That's pretty good. Especially because, I mean, in the first month, well, in that second month, then he pretty much doubled his weight. So maybe I should, uh, maybe I should look to him for a little bit of, let's just say, um, weight gaining inspiration. But, uh, so plan today, had my two classes, really just kind of had to show up. There's lectures, didn't really have to do anything, which is kind of nice. Maybe passively absorb some information, take a little bit of notes. And now I can do what I actually want to do. Chest, side delts, and a uh, and a touch. Just a little touch of calves. Well, actually, I guess not a touch. I'm just going to do calves, too. So, like I was saying in the last video, I'm not just going to do my arbitrary eight sets. Like I've been doing for a pretty long time. I want to change it up a little bit. Because I'm kind of curious about... A potential new, uh, not new, but just kind of different way to change up the training. So rather than just go for my eight sets for no reason, apart from the fact that I think that's an amount of volume which is going to stimulate some some muscle growth and or maintenance, depending on if you're in a bulking or in a cutting context, but. You know, I think that that might just be a little bit of a closed-minded way to go about it. Like, I think within, you know, four or five sets up to probably 12, I think that's around maybe the peak of your effective sets. But then again, you got to think, back when I was a beginner, first year, year and a half or so, I was doing workouts where every muscle group had 25 total sets of, uh, you know, total working sets. Now those, I think there's a lot more fluff work involved, but now if I kind of had to consolidate at least the method which I'm going to try to do for the next, you know, couple weeks or so, it's, you know, do my hard sets, and then once I feel like I've, you know, systematically fatigued whatever muscle I'm aiming at, today's going to be chest, so if I get done with three sets of incline bench, and then two sets of like, you know, cable press, then maybe I do one set of flies, and I think I'm fully pumped, then I'm just going to call it there. And do not think that I think that the pump is the indicator that the workout is over, or that it was a good workout. Because I could get a good chest pump just by spamming, you know, the pec deck. I could just sit there with really light weight for probably half an hour, and then I could get a pretty good chest pump. I could get you know, pretty swollen, a lot of blood flow in the area, but that's not enough stimulus for muscle growth. At least I don't think so. You know, I need some heavy shit too, like bench and you know other kind of pressing movements. So it's a little bit subjective, but I'm still going to be in the basic realm of sets. Oh my god, this girl needs to drive. Of what I would do anyway, you know, like I've had chest days where I've gotten to set six, and honestly. The only reason that I even did two more sets was just kind of because, you know, I had that in my mind beforehand. Even though it's set six, I feel like I was fully pumped. But, you know, if you're doing around eight, eight, little more, a little less, maybe even not that specific. If you've been lifting for a little bit of time, you've been making gains, you do your sets hard, progressive overload, and you lift through the pump. You know, that's good. All right, I'm really trying to get into the nitty grittiness of trying to, well, I guess optimize my training. <laughs> I know that's silly coming from me. 
from uh, all the TikToks that have been, you know, goofing around. I feel like the TikTok at this point is almost, <laughs> almost purely ironic, but they're kind of fun to make. But enough of, enough of that little chat. So I'm gonna get warm, do some shoulder like warm ups, some rotator cuff stuff, tricep push downs, light just to get my triceps warm. You know, work my front delts a little bit do some chest activation with the cable by kind of pressing the cable across my body like that. And then once I feel like my whole little arm, shoulder, chest, maybe I'll do a little bit of cable rows too because you, know, you want to have a solid base to press off of on the bench or, you know, whatever else. So once I feel like I'm totally warm, I'll get up to, you know, either a rack or a, I don't know, a something. Yeah, well, actually, I don't really have a choice. I kind of have to start with inclined barbell. I like it, but I would prefer the option of doing like Smith or dumbbell, but I'll get there. A plate, a couple of reps, two plates for a couple, three, and then based on that three rep warm up or three plate warm up, I'll kind of decide how heavy I want to go. Right, and one thing too, which I am trying to focus on even more, which honestly I've kind of always been focused on, but I really want to make sure I keep pushing it, is to make sure that every set. I'm really pushing it to the limit because if I'm not going to have a ton of sets, you know, if I'm not going to do my normal eight and instead I'm only going to cut it down to, you know, potentially the five range, I got to make sure these sets are fucking crazy. You know, I felt pretty good after yesterday's leg day, even with only four sets for quads, that set of squats, that is the intensity that I want to be able to bring to almost fucking every set. So if I can keep these pumping out like that, I think I am setting myself up for success. So let's find somewhere to park and uh, get started. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, perfect. Okay, I think, let's see, one more here, and then move on. My, uh, yeah, yeah, what am I saying? bit of wide grip on that one yeah I'm fucking done I think on bench man let's do something else I foresee I foresee cable press but I'll see what's available all right so getting two cables at once and the uh, you know that goal combined with how packed it is those two things do not mix so instead of cable flies I think I'll just do a set of a uh, pack deck so this stack is not as heavy as I would want so I'm going to make the set more difficult by way of really squeezing like as hard as I fucking can, even like multitudes of times, well, maybe not multitudes of times, but even harder than the weight it's actually pulling back when I get to the top. So I don't know, five, six reps like that. And then I really just want to get to the point where I can barely move. So that's kind of the goal here.
Ja. 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 Okay. Oh yeah. One more like that. All right, let's um, let's go find something else to do. I'm not sure how to actually do it, but I think I'm just gonna finish with these. I may do a drop set. I may not. I'll see how the first portion just straight up flies feels. <sighs> Yeah, that's it. Let's go check the chest pump. All right. So, I was actually probably going to be done after five sets, but I had to take a couple minutes in between the bench before I made it to the pec deck because I was kind of waiting for some cable presses, which I would have liked to do but didn't have access to. But even though I didn't fucking you know, get to do the workout exactly how I wanted to, I still feel fully fucking pumped and fatigued. And, uh, oh yeah, stimulated. That's the key word that I'm, uh, that we're talking about here. The pec muscles have been stimulated. So, let's see how they look pump wise. So, when it's hard to take the shirt off, not a terrible fucking sign. So, only well, six sets, like two less than eight, which I normally do. So, the volume wasn't really even that different today, but the pump is clearly just as fucking good. Oh my goodness. Fucking fibers coming out of nowhere. Veins a little bit. You know, we're, you know, bulking. I'm even two weeks in the bulk. I shouldn't be too much softer. Probably a little, but for the most part, the only thing that's changed in terms of my weight isn't more muscle and it isn't more fat. It's really just more water and carbs inside of all my fucking, you know, muscle fibers. Because now I'm totally full. Well, let's not sit here for too long. The workout's not even over. We gotta go get a side delt pump, come back, then do calves, and then get in the car and, uh, actually, I gotta go to fucking Kroger. I might turn this into a lift slash grocery trip. We'll have to see. All right, so this is the equivalent of the back rooms at this gym, but 50 pound dumbbells, exactly what I want for some lateral raises. So I'll just sit here for a couple, and then, honestly, once I feel like my side delts are fully pumped, I'll just call it there. Okay. Oh. 
anyway, so couldn't help myself. I wanted to do the uh, the machine side laterals like I know I like. But I think I'll just do two more sets and then go check the pump. Honestly, they're already burning. It's never really a challenge for me to get a shoulder pump, especially when I'm full of carbs and in a fed state. Okay. Okay. All right. Side delts done. My shoulders are on fucking fire right now. Like even just standing here, they just burn. Like I can't even get comfortable. So, not a bad sign. But let's see how they look. Yeah. It's almost hard to even get the freaking shirt off. What do you think? Round? Round it over? Certainly looks to be that way. Not even doing a fucking flex, just standing with good posture. Got like fucking shoulder pads. Boy. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Ah. Dude, yeah, even just standing really fucking hurt, dude. Fully pumped up. I attribute that to some fruit snacks and as well as some gushers I had earlier in class. So let's get a rear double by and then get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, fuck, that fucking stings. All right, let's freaking roll. All right, scratch that. No grocery chip for you. But I did re get a little re-up, a little resupply on Krispy Kreme donuts, four ribeyes, uh, a couple sweets, like some gummy worms and shit, two half gallons of chocolate milk, some bagels, blueberry, of course, some cream cheese, some raisin cinnamon bread, the likes of which I'm gonna just douse in butter as with a you know, it's toast. And then one thing that I really needed for a little while was fucking avocado toast. No, no, what am I saying? Avocado oil. There we go. Because with the steaks, it's pretty easy to make a good ribeye if you're not concerned with the calories in it. Just because if I throw a ton of avocado oil into a pan, a couple minutes aside, then it's perfect. But I ran out of avocado oil at the house, so I've been using olive oil, and I've just been smoking up the living room, or the kitchen slash living room, like I've had to open up the window and like blow air in and out, that sucks, right? For, uh, I'd say general rule for steaks, not even general rule, like you're going to want to use avocado oil or any kind of oil with a higher smoke point. Olive oil is a little bit too, um, well, it's just got a lower smoke point. Nothing else to say other than that. But yeah, chest feels pretty fucking fatigued. My shoulders were burning, even after just a couple of sets, like just four sets of those lateral raises. They were really fucking pumped up. I think they kind of just hit their peak carb fullness or whatever, because like, I could, even just standing here naturally. Holy <sighs> glad flexing without doing anything. They were just like on fire. Which, good sign. So, tomorrow's going to be back in rear delts. I didn't end up doing calves after side delts. I could still kind of feel them from yesterday's leg day. So, calves, I do think you should hit as often as, you know, maintainable. But what I kind of mean by that is hit them as often as they're not sore. So, let's say you finish your lift. You can tell that your calves aren't sore. You know, what do you think you should do? You should probably freaking bust out a couple sets. The topic of whether or not calves are genetic, you know, there's some anomalies. At the crazy range, some people have some pretty freaking rough calves. But for the most part, it's just like any other muscle. You got to hit it if you want to grow it, man. Come on, let's get a, 
Let's not lose sight of these basic fundamental principles of training, you know? So, what else do I even have to say? Cardio in the morning, 30 minutes. Um, dieting? So how about this here? When I'm dieting down, right, when I'm trying to cut down, I will do fasted cardio. Just because I don't really want to eat a ton of food as soon as I wake up, you know? Hmm. I've only got so many calories in the day. And for me to go in and do my cardio and then come back and then like shower and everything else, it just kind of delays the start time for me to eat. And then I kind of get to eat uh, bigger meals more frequently, you know? If I have 500 calories for breakfast before I do go to my cardio, I'll probably be hungry right after the cardio too and then I'll have another 500 calorie meal. And then before I know it, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning and I've got only 1,500 calories left for the whole day. So, I don't really fast, but when I'm cutting down, I do try to make sure my meals are more so towards probably around noon and later. Probably around noon and later. Just so I can go to bed after eating a big meal, you know? Because <sighs> the last thing you want to do in a dieting context is go to bed hungry. I mean, you're just asking to fucking cheat on your uh, cheat on your calorie deficit. But now that I'm trying to bulk up, I'm still doing my my daily cardio. But I am gonna eat beforehand, just because as soon as I wake up, I gotta get some food in my system. You know, I need to I need to eat something. I need to put a dent into my you know, what's gonna end up being like a five-ish thousand calorie day. So if you have a relatively big breakfast, let's say even a thousand calories, you know, that's like a, up 20% of the way done and it's only eight o'clock in the morning. So not only do I change the actual macros and the type of foods, depending on whether I'm trying to gain weight or lose weight, I also change the timing to make it just more conducive with actually getting all the food in. Because for me, the only thing... <sighs> Oh my god. The only thing that's going to stop me from gaining weight on this bulk is whether or not I stop eating in a calorie surplus. So, you know, I want to make it as easy as possible for me to get these calories in every day on a consistent basis. But I think we're getting towards the end of the initial weight spike, right? Because I haven't really gained much muscle as far as this bulk is concerned. So I'm up like 15 pounds from my dieted weight. You know, how the fuck did that happen? You know, it's just all the intramuscular little uh, gas tanks I've been saying of carbs and water is now full. And on the cut, you know, they're empty. So I'd say once I get to up about, I think it'll probably peak out around maybe 247, 248. And then instead of this quick spike over these first two weeks it's going to transition into a slow, progressive growth. So if that starts to plateau a little bit, then you know that's going to be a cue that I'm going to have to eat more food, which the same thing is going to apply to you. If you know somebody who has been saying, like, oh, dude, I eat so much, but I can't gain any weight. I, I eat so much, though. You know, I guess I have a fast metabolism. I just burn it off. No. Mm, not exactly. I would go so far as to call that just being misinformed, but it could potentially borderline delusion. You know, the only thing that's going to make that scale go up, I don't care if you train with half your intensity or with twice your intensity. Obviously, I don't want you to train intensely, but what I'm trying to say is you can have an awesome workout routine, but if you don't actually eat in accordance with that and in accordance with any particular weight goal, either, you know, gaining or losing, then you're not going to see much physical change. It's the only thing that's holding, I, yeah, food, calories, that's the only thing stopping you from breaking that 200-pound limit. So if you've been kind of on the edge, you've been teetering on whether or not you should bulk up or cut down, I'd say, you know, usually I don't care if it's winter or summer, I'll just bulk or cut whatever's up next, but... You're not going to be walking around shirtless for the next couple of months. You may as well just start bulking. If you're 
on the edge about which one you want to do. You don't really know. At least just pick one. At least pick one. Maybe flip a coin. Heads you cut, tails you bulk. And you might not even have to actually listen to what the coin lands on. It's just the action of doing that if you're kind of on the edge. Once you flip the coin in your mind, you're going to realize what side you're hoping for. So maybe subconsciously, you do want to cut down, but you're just not exactly sure that you're, uh, that you're ready to pull the trigger on it. I say just download the stupid simple macro tracker and start buying your keto buns and you know, zero sugar soda, low sugar barbecue sauce, and get tracking. And then if the inverse is true and you're trying to gain weight and you've been having trouble, hit your protein. Solid protein sources, milk, beef, chicken, you know, pretty much animal products. And then to an extent, if you can't gain weight with your rice and whatever else, you just got to eat more of whatever's available. Mac and cheese, mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah, that's part of what I just fucking got. almost crashed a little yeah I just got a little thing of instant well not even instant but just like already prepared mac and cheese and mashed potatoes so I honestly might just crack into that as soon as I get home but I'll have to fucking see so cardio in the morning back rear delts later in the evening oh my god I swear every time I'm fucking driving cops just pull people over like right behind me it's giving me anxiety. But yeah, whatever. Train hard tomorrow, do your cardio. You get the drill. So I'll freaking see you next time.